In linear algebra, the dual numbers extend the real numbers by adjoining one new element epsilon with the property epsilon 2 equals 0. The collection of dual numbers forms a particular two-dimensional commutative unit or associative algebra over the real numbers. Every dual number has the form Z equals a plus B epsilon with a and B uniquely determined real numbers. Dual numbers can also be thought of as the exterior algebra of a one-dimensional vector space. The algebra of dual numbers is a ring that is a local ring since the principal ideal generated by epsilon is its only maximal ideal. Dual numbers form the coefficients of dual quaternions. Linear representation. Using matrices, dual numbers can be represented as the sum and product of dual numbers are then calculated with ordinary matrix addition and matrix multiplication. Both operations are commutative and associative within the algebra of dual numbers. This correspondence is analogous to the usual matrix representation of complex numbers. However, it is not the only representation with 2 times 2 real matrices, as is shown in the profile of 2 times 2 real matrices. Like the complex plane and split complex number plane, the dual numbers are one of the realizations of planar algebra. Geometry The unit circle of dual numbers consists of those with or equals 1 or minus 1 since these satisfy ZZ asterisk equals 1 where Z asterisk equals a minus B epsilon. However, note that, so the exponential map applied to the epsilon axis covers only half the circle. If a 0 and m equals b, a, then z equals a is the polar decomposition of the dual number z, and the slope m is its angular part. The concept of a rotation in the dual number plane is equivalent to a vertical shear mapping since equals 1 plus epsilon. In absolute space and time the Galilean transformation that is relates the resting coordinate system to a moving frame of reference of velocity v, with dual numbers t plus x epsilon representing events along one space dimension and time, the same transformation is affected with multiplication by cycles give on two dual numbers p and q. They determine the set of Z such that the difference in slopes between the lines from Z to P and Q is constant. This set is a cycle in the dual number plane, since the equation setting the difference in slopes of the lines to a constant is a quadratic equation. In the real part of Z, a cycle is a parabola. The cyclic rotation of the dual number plane occurs as a motion of the projective line over dual numbers. According to Yaglom, the cycle Z equals Z, Y equals alpha X2, is invariant under the composition of the shear with the translation. This composition is a cyclic rotation. The concept has been further developed by V. V. Kizil. Algebraic properties. In abstract algebra terms, the dual numbers can be described as the quotient of the polynomial ring R x by the ideal generated by the polynomial x2, R x. The image of x in the quotient is the unit epsilon. With this description, it is clear that the dual numbers form a commutative ring with characteristic zero. The inherited multiplication gives the dual numbers the structure of a commutative and associative algebra over the rails of dimension 2. The algebra is not a division algebra or field since the elements of the form 0 plus b epsilon are not invertible. All elements of this form are zero divisors. The algebra of dual numbers is isomorphic to the exterior algebra of generalization. This construction can be carried out more generally. For a commutative ring R1 can define the dual numbers over R as the quotient of the polynomial ring R x by the ideal. The image of x then has square equal to zero and corresponds to the element epsilon from above. This ring and its generalizations play an important part in the algebraic theory of derivations and Kala differentials.
over any ring R, the dual number A plus B epsilon is a unit if and only if A is a unit in R. In this case, the inverse of A plus B epsilon is A minus 1 minus bar minus 2 epsilon. As a consequence, we see that the dual numbers over any field form a local ring, its maximal ideal being the principal ideal generated by epsilon. Differentiation. One application of dual numbers is automatic differentiation. Consider the real dual numbers above. Then we have this result. Where is the derivative of? By computing over the dual numbers, rather than over the rails, we can use this to compute derivatives of polynomials. More generally, we can extend any real function to the dual numbers by looking at its Taylor series. By computing compositions of these functions over the dual numbers and examining the coefficient of epsilon in the result we find we have automatically computed the derivative of the composition. A similar method works for polynomials of n variables using the exterior algebra of an n-dimensional vector space. Superspace Dual numbers find applications in physics, where they constitute one of the simplest non-trivial examples of a superspace. The direction along epsilon is termed the fermionic direction, and the real component is termed the bosonic direction. The fermionic direction earns this name from the fact that fermions obey the Pauli exclusion principle. Under the exchange of coordinates, the quantum mechanical wave function changes sign, and thus vanishes if two coordinates are brought together. This physical idea is captured by the algebraic relation epsilon 2 equals 0. Division Division of dual numbers is defined when the real part of the denominator is non-zero. The division process is analogous to complex division in that the denominator is multiplied by its conjugate in order to cancel the non-real parts. Therefore, to divide an equation of the form, we multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, which is defined when c is non-zero. If, on the other hand, c is zero while d is not, then the equation has no solution if a is non-zero, is otherwise solved by any dual number of the form. This means that the non-real part of the quotient is arbitrary and division is therefore not defined for purely non-real dual numbers. Indeed, they are zero divisors and clearly form an ideal of the associative algebra of the dual numbers. Projective line The idea of a projective line over dual numbers was advanced by Grunwald and Corrado Segre. Just as the Riemann sphere needs a north pole point at infinity to close up the complex projective line, so a line at infinity succeeds in closing up the plane of dual numbers to a cylinder. Suppose C is the ring of dual numbers x plus y i epsilon and u is the subset with x zero. Then U is the group of units of D. Let B equals, in dx D, a U or B U. A relation is defined on B as follows. Tilde when there is a U and U such that U A equals C and UB equals D. This relation is in fact an equivalence relation. The points of the projective line over D are equivalence classes in B under this relation. P equals B, tilde. Consider the embedding dp by zu where u is the equivalence class of, then points u, n2 equals 0, a in p but are not the image of any point under the embedding. p is projected onto a cylinder by projection. Take a cylinder tangent to the double number plane on the line, y epsilon, y, epsilon 2 equals 0. Now take the opposite line on the cylinder for the axis of a pencil of planes. The planes intersecting the dual number plane and cylinder provide a correspondence of points between these surfaces. The plane parallel to the dual number plane corresponds to points U, N, 2 equals 0 in the projective line over dual numbers. 